All right, we got some football to talk about and maybe a little hur- hurricane hockey sprinkled in there with our friend Luke DeCock from the News and Observer who joins us every Friday. All right, sir, which game would you like to start with? You decide. App hosting North Carolina or East Carolina hosting NC State? Luke's choice. Before I answer that question, I have to ask you, what would your parlay pay? Uh, 240 Okay. Uh, and in terms of choices of games? Right. Two dollars and forty cents, or two hundred and forty dollars. That would be it, it, it's it's two hundred and forty uh, undescribed, undisclosed units, uh, the because the last 10%. time, yeah, the last time I uh, I placed a wager with actual money, uh, I was in Las Vegas, and it was probably twelve years ago. Well, in a different timeline, you might be placing that bet for ten cents. Paying two dollars and forty cents on your phone right. in the state of North Carolina. Uh, we are not God. in that timeline. Nope, so anyway, to your not. to your original question, first of all, I want to say that the big rivalry is, of course, the Merseyside Derby. And to that note, if Everton uh, extracts a point, as you say, I will be extremely happy to start the day Saturday. Are you an uh, Are you an Everton guy? I am uh, not quite born, but as close as you can get, Evertonian. Okay, I have a, I have a very good friend who's an Everton. For, like I have Onana on my fantasy team, but we'll just leave it at that. No, I don't know, but uh, we'll see. Maybe <laughs> next year. Um, but yeah, no, uh, uh, many, many decades of of horrible, torturous Everton yep. fandom. It's it's when I tell NC State fans, I know what they've been through, going years and years and years without a title, always tripping over your own shoelaces right. in the shadow of two huge local rivals who get way more attention. Uh, that's a lot like being an Evertonian, much more so than being a White Sox fan. Anyway. <laughs> Let's jump straight to NC State in Greenville. Okay. That's where I'll be. Hopefully, uh, giddy after uh, uh, listening to the second half of the Everton game in the car mm. on the way down to Greenville. Uh, you know, to, I, as I wrote this week, if not now for NC State, when? Yep. I mean, this is the best chance NC State's going to have to do anything of note in football. You can't screw that up in week one by losing at East Carolina. I, I, I should say you can't. You 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 don't. Right. Um, you certainly can. And. You know, and Mike Houston's a terrific coach. He's had time at ECU. This was a, a team that I think I would have picked to beat BC in the military bowl last year if that hadn't been coveted out. Uh, it's uh, it's 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 they've got a quarterback, which at that level, sort of at the conference USA level, you can fake a lot of things, right? You can you can develop guys into linemen and defensive backs that got overlooked in recruiting. You can get little fast running backs and big slow running backs and fit them into your offense, and you can recruit tight ends who you know are undersized or too slow and turn them into weapons but you can't fake quarterback and ECU with Holt Nailers is not right. faking quarterback so I think that's a, a huge advantage I, I expect NC State to win uh, but I would be the least shocked person in the world if, if they did screw this up I, I, I hope without rooting for anybody I hope NC State does not uh, as cool as it would be to see the atmosphere in Greenville if if East Carolina wins, I, I just we we so rarely have football seasons of note around here. It's mm. obviously basketball territory. NC State has a chance to really do something on a national scale, and to screw that up in Week One by losing in Greenville would 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 be unfortunate. You know, if, if you mm-hmm. go into Clemson and lose, fine, but don't not this way. So that that's sort of my take on that. NC State should win, but Lord knows it, it, it whether or not NC State will win is a completely different question. And the way I've discussed this, like. I mean, I'm not trying to say that it's proof that Dave Dorn's not, like no. I think the program is excellent. I really do. I love, I love what what they have been able to accomplish and build at NC State, and I think it will be a year in and year out. Which obviously, a, you know, a couple of peaks and a couple of valleys, but year in and year out, I think it will be a program. Uh, that is in and around the top 25. And some some years they'll be 15th and some years they'll be 30th. Um, but you get the opportunity with as many returning players. Like, this is the year to find out if they can really get rid of all the other stuff that we've been dealing with forever uh, and just go about the business. I think 10 wins is the base. I think oh, to, to me that's the, that's the basement of the season. Now it doesn't have to be twelve, but man, nine would feel very empty to me. But here's the thing: you you very rarely in modern college football have a legitimate chance to win twelve games, and to if if you let that go right. by, like as I said, you lose to Clemson, fine. That that game's on the road this year. You, you whatever. You still have a chance to win the division if you lose to Clemson. Maybe even 
so sneak into the CFP depending on what happens elsewhere. But uh, to lose to East Carolina starting it. Now that said, you know the thing you didn't mention against about this team that that's true as well is, you know we 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 never really know these these college athletes just because we don't get to spend very much time with them mm-hmm. these days. Um, but I will say whether just through coincidence and sort of being around them a little bit, I think NC State's football team has really kind of generational leadership. It has players yeah. who are, are are special, not just in the way they play football, but kind of in their their worldview and their um, ambition and, and all of that. So I think if, if, if there is an NC State team, not just in terms of talent, uh, but in terms of intangibles that is primed to get over that, that hump, that, that this, this group has it. Uh, so we'll, you know, we'll see if they can make the most of their potential and stay healthy and all those other things that everybody has to deal with. But uh, I think there's a lot. NC State has a lot going for it. And I think they have the, those types of players on both sides of the ball. And I think we learned this during the pandemic year. Uh, they they were as solid a group as we have seen in the league during that season. So maybe that also uh, was kind of a harbinger of things to come. All right, let's go up to Kid Brewer Stadium, uh, which is, I mean, no disrespect to anybody else, my favorite venue uh, in the state to watch a football game. Uh, And to me, it's obviously the point spread belies this. It's a toss-up game. Um, But I think that for the same reasons, maybe not the same reasons, uh, there is a psychological factor that App has to overcome in this game in that, I believe they expect to win. And when you get I don't think they think that they can win. I think App believes they expect that they will win. And sometimes those are the tougher games to win. When you're it's it would not be an upset. It's easier for App to upset North Carolina than it is to beat them in their own minds maybe as the favorite. I don't disagree with your premise and I think that is a is a big hurdle for teams that are on the rise in a lot of cases. You know, we saw that kind of with Duke at in the early years of the the Cutcliffe era when they were unquestionably making progress, but still had a hard time taking care of business against like Richmond. Yeah. You know, you you know, you have to make that transition from the scrappy little guy everybody's rooting for to the big mean guy that's gonna step on your throat. I, I I understand what you're saying with regard to App and the difference between an upset and feeling like you should win. Um, I don't know in my mind that that's in play as much this week, uh, in part because it's still UNC going up the mountain. It's still, you know, the little guy against the big guy. I think there's still enough chip on App State's shoulder playing UNC that the, the differences between, say, like this and if you were playing like a really good coastal team, uh, where you know maybe coastal's getting some attention, but you're at home and you're a two-point favorite, and you can you take care of that? I I, I think it's a different scenario. I think there's still going to be that sort of we have to pull the upset mentality um, because it is the big in-state, right. the flagship, if you will, uh, to quote Everett Withers. Uh, <laughs> it is the it is the, the still the big dog. But that said. I mean, I, I I picked App State in the paper. I fully expect App State to, to to take care of business, for lack of a better word, at home. I mean, as good as UNC looked in some areas against FAMU on Saturday, uh, there were a lot of areas that didn't look as sure. good. And I think, you know, you can talk all you want about how experienced App State is and how talented UNC is. I think this is the kind of tough road environment where, uh, you know, it may just be a, a, a hair too soon for UNC. And, you know, I don't necessarily buy what Mac is selling in terms of they're the underdog and all that because they're still an ACC school playing right. a Sun Belt school, and you should never ever be the underdog as an ACC school playing a Sun Belt school. I don't care what the circumstances are. That said, I, I really feel like this is a a lot of a lot of things are lining up for App State in this one. Um, I expect it to be close, yeah, and I expect Drake May to play well uh, and Omari and Hampton to play well. Uh, but I expect App State to win. I expect the over to hit sometime early in the third quarter, maybe <laughs> even by halftime. Here's the thing, Luke DeCock, um, the 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 problems that we saw with Duke's, or rather with North Carolina's defense, uh, should be exploited by App State. Good running game, uh, and I think they can go over the top uh, with Chase Bryce throwing the ball down the field, but the a whole bunch of new wide receivers for App. Real quick, Duke and Temple tonight. I mean, 
I mean, have no idea what to expect. I don't know which quarterback we're going to see. Uh, I just want to see a team kind of play with a little bit more freedom that they have played with over the last few years. Yeah, I think the coaching change is kind of going to going to be give them a jolt of sort of new energy and confidence. I don't think there's any question that, you know, for for and, and look, I'm a David Cutcliffe defender. Me too. Um, but I don't think there's any question that for everything he accomplished, things had gotten a little stale, both schematically and sort of in terms of general team energy. It wasn't always that way, but it was at the end. And um, Mike Elko and his staff have, have certainly they're you know brought a, a different. I don't want to say attitude because that's such a cliche, but it's just different. It's like yeah. a change of scenery, and it and it helps. I, I do think we'll see exclusively Riley Leonard at quarterback. I think we'll probably see Jordan Moore in some sort of Brandon Kinnett packages maybe. <laughs> oh, man, um, I hated those kit packages. I hated them. Well, Brandon Kinnett was, was the uh, Marcus Colston of – of ACC <laughs> fantasy football, the year that Colston was eligible at tight end. Is, I think it was his, his rookie or second year. The one year he was eligible at tight end, and if you didn't have him, you couldn't win your league because he had like 112 <laughs> Right. Uh, anyway, yeah, no, so I think we'll see Jordan Moore in some of some of those those sort of packages um, designed to, to give him the ball, you know, whether as a slot receiver or as a running back, designed to give him the ball and present that threat to the defense. I doubt Duke will show too much of its hand in that regard against Temple. Honestly... The the as 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 off the pace as Duke looked last year, there's still enough Temple uh, talent there to beat a rebuilding Temple program that's also starting over, and I I, I think you know that that this is a chance for Duke to get off to a good start. Um, neither side is really going to know what to expect from each other, uh, which will be interesting. But I think you know there's there's going to be at home. Uh, new new regime. There's going to be a lot of, of of positive momentum for Duke, and 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 you know probably Temple's going to get that same thing when it plays its home opener, but not opening on the road. So I, I I think Duke wins this one. I'd like to see some people in the seats and some energy at Wallace Wade Stadium. All right, finally, I think the last time we spoke, and it goes back a couple of weeks, uh, the uh, Hurricanes got the news that Max Patchy ready, torn Achilles out. And we discussed whether or not they needed to replace him. They did, I guess, uh, when they went out and signed Paul Stasny to a $1.5 million contract for one year. 21 goals last year in Winnipeg. Your thoughts on Stasny and where this roster is, because they're done. Uh, and there's still going to have to be some uh, some moves made to get salary cap compliant by the start of the season. But uh, what are your thoughts on what they've done? You know, I don't. I don't think that's an issue. Uh, I, you know, this with with Patchy already going on LTIR. You know, you don't get the full season because you expect him back, but you've right. got a little wiggle room there, and they use that wiggle room to get Stastny, who, you know, I don't know how much tread he has left on his tires, but he helps out with depth at center. You're going to be less reliant on Kokiemi and Jack Drury, which I think is good because to me, the two big questions on this team uh, with Patchy already healthy were: could Kokiemi and Drury handle the load at center? And you're kind of expecting the two of them to be better than Trocek and Lawrence, which is maybe maybe not possible, but maybe it is. And now you throw throw Stastny in there. Now it's now it's easier. Now you just got to get mm-hmm. those three guys collectively to be better. And you know, let's not, let's face it. With some of the centers the Hurricanes had last year, you were a little nervous putting them out in D zone draws uh, against you know in on the road in tough matchups, especially when they got out there with the Slave and D'Angelo pairing. None of that's an issue now, and, and you can use Stastny in that role uh, as sort of your veteran guy. You know, Derek Steppen will be in camp yeah. too. That how, how how what is how bad is Derek Steppen's luck where he signs with the Hurricanes and then they offer Sheet Kokiemi and then he right. accepts a PTO with the Hurricanes and they're like, Oh, by the way, we're signing Paul Stastny at the end of the week. So <laughs> hope you weren't hope you weren't planning on keeping your house. Uh, but you know, so so there's some depth there. You know, the one question that's still there is is Jake Gardner really a third pairing left D or not? Mm-hmm. And if he's not, then you put him on LTIR and you grab some guy in waivers at the end of training camp. There'll be somebody, or you give up a seventh to get someone. There's not, there's, you know, there's, that's not going to be an issue. Uh, but it, it is going to be really interesting to see. I mean, if he's healthy, they really can't put him on LTIR. All, all they can really do. Oh, Adam. <laughs> they could hurt him. What, what is, uh, what is that guy, uh, that Sean guy who, uh, uh, Tanya Harding contracted. Oh yeah, that, that guy, guy still yeah, around? He, whack, whack Jake Gardner on the hip with a with a wrench. No, I, I. Here's the thing: if Jake Gardner isn't able to play in the NHL, given his talent mm-hmm. and history and all those things, it's going to be because he's not 
fully up to speed. They say he's healthy in skating, so... I understand that, but if he's not able to skate at an NHL level, then it's clear that his... His uh, that the seven million dollar man probably needs some more time in the shop. So, yeah. uh, you know, these things will all work themselves out. And there's also the possibility of trading him to somewhere like Arizona uh, that needs the that needs the money. So that needs there's, that there's, needs there's, to get to the cap floor, right? That yeah. needs to spend the money. That's right. Um, so so there's there's all kinds of options. And maybe you you trade him to Arizona and they just bury him in the HL, or maybe you bury him in the HL. There's there's ways around this, but I think that. You know the Stastny move, and and then when Patcherty does come back, the the money is low enough that the co- the cap numbers are all still going to work. So you have him then. Um, it, it's 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 interesting because this is not a franchise that's typically typically gone out and gotten older players. Uh, they, no. they've typically gone young, and so this is more of a what you see from contenders tweaking by waiting till the end of free agency. And adding a guy who's still there at a low price, uh, you know, if, they, if they'd signed him on July, whatever it was this year, um, for a lot of money, it wouldn't have made any sense. But you know, you, you, it's always been part of their strategy to kind of wait out the market on some guys. And here's a guy who's still a pretty good player and, and is is available pretty cheap. And you you slot him in, and with Patch already being hurt, that kind of opens the door, and, and it makes a lot of sense. Luke Decock from the News and Observer at Luke Decock on Twitter. Uh, I wish. I wish you good health. I don't wish you good luck in the Merseyside Derby. Come on, you blues. Up the toffees.